Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with USL Dunkirk. It is our ninth season in charge of USL Dunkirk. It is our second season in League 1 because if you didn't watch the last couple of episodes, we managed to survive by purely not being as bad as other teams around us. We were pretty bad, but we weren't as bad as teams like Strasbourg. I think Dijon possibly went down, maybe Nîmes, someone like that. Anyway, we are still here. Dijon didn't go down there fourth. What an idiot. We are still here in League 1 and obviously at the start of the season, transfer business has happened. You can probably already spot a few names on this home screen. We're going to jump first into the players that have been released. And if I'm perfectly honest, there's not a huge amount of names on there. Maybe the bottom four you may have heard of. Oliver, Olivier, sorry, Demange, Vinny Cheese, Paul Montgomery and Elias have left the club. Paul Montgomery, a player who did play a few times for us over the years. How many times? Eight. Eight games he played. He has left. He is now currently on a free transfer. Nobody wants him. I think he'd be a good little signing for like a League One side. Another player to leave the club permanently on a free transfer is Elias. He has currently got no club. Spent the last couple of seasons, I think, out on loan at various teams. I think he, again, he's quite good. He just needs to get the opportunity to play. He was getting paid way too much money for us. So I took the opportunity as his contract was running out to get rid of him. This is going to be a very, very big episode because of the amount of transfers that have happened. Ten players have left the club for money. Another about ten have left on loan and we brought in about 15 new players as well. So buckle up because there's a lot that's going to go on. Dylan Silva, the goalkeeper who basically got us through a, a couple of seasons in uh, the Championnat Nationale and League 2, has left the club. He's signed for Tondela, who I want to say on Portuguese side, about 18k, which is better than nothing considering his contract was running out. £78,000 has managed to sign Guy Depode to SC Gag Gagnoa, maybe, who I want to say on our Ivorian side. I'm kind of annoyed because we could have sold this guy a long time ago for a little bit more money. He wasn't really getting any better, was he? So, you know what, I thought, let's cut, cut our ties, save a bit of money on him. Clever, a player who signed last season, went out on loan to Concarneau, has now been sold for £110,000. Not a lot we can really say about him, we've just made a huge profit. Only Duncliffe, the Irishman, has left the club as well. He has gone to Cork City. £160,000 we're getting for him. I think he kind of, he came at a wrong time. If we got him earlier on in the save, as in like the first or second season, I think he would have been a lot better for us. But since, I say a lot better, if he was this good in the first or second season, he would have been great for us. Unfortunately, we kind of outgrew him. Adriano Calzolai, a player who we signed for a free transfer, I want to say. I think it was a free transfer. We signed him. We signed most people on free transfers. Had a decent season with us-ish. Played 13 games. He has left. Gone to League One side Rotherham for £210,000. Antonio Brunetti has also made his way to England. He has signed for Norwich. He's gone into the under-23s, apparently. He played a couple of games for us. I well, know, one game for us. I think he could have been good. He just never really got the chance. Norwich came in £210,000, probably after a bunch of sell-ons and things. But I think that's good money for a player who wasn't really going to get too much football at us. For £220,000, Richmond Amancona has also left the club and signed for Adjuana Stars, who I think are a Ghana inside. He was annoyed because I didn't sell him to his favourite team in Ghana. They offered £100,000. Adjuana Stars, maybe, if that's what they're called, offered £210,000. So he has gone. He scored one goal. That's pretty much all he did. A bit of a risk, this one. Wojtek Abraham has left the club. He is signed for Jitlava, who I want to say probably from the Czech Republic. He has... We've actually taken a loss on this guy. Um, I just don't think he was getting better. Looking at him here... He's got some great mental stats. He was never going to get in the first team. This team came in for him for a reasonable sum, 250k. We are, I think there's a sell-on as well in there. We've lost a little bit of money. It's probably one of our worst bits of transfer business that we've done so far. Dan Stage has also left the club. He has gone to England. I, technically, he's gone to Wales. He has signed for Swansea for about £500,000 in total. 250 up front and then another 450 after a certain amount of appearances and goals and stuff. He's already played once and scored somehow. He couldn't do that for us. And finally, the Croatian Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Zvomenir Zubak, has also left the club. He has signed for Istra 1961 for about £500,000. 375, raising up to 475 after various appearances. He was great for us in League 2, scoring a bunch of goals. Bunch of important goals. I say bunch, he scored five, but they were all important goals. He's left the club, he's gone back to his native Croatia, and we wish him all the best, Croatian Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who's hip, hip, who's hipped his injury, he's got an injured hip. 
players to join the club then, in no particular order. First up, 29-year-old Frenchman Marcus Taram, who is Lillian Taram's son. The inside forward has signed on loan from Dijon until the end of the season. We're paying some of his wages. I think it's three, yeah, £3,700 a week of his wages. If he doesn't play, it's £12,000. So he's probably going to play a lot more just from a financial aspect. Also on loan, this time from Marseille, is a French attacking midfielder Kingsley Asai Antwi. He is superb. Four and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. Physically, he's a beast. Mentally, he's a beast. Technically, he's a beast. The only downside is he plays an attacking playmaker. Uh, we don't really play that position, so we are going to possibly utilise him as a right-sided winger. It says inside forward, but he can play as a winger just as well. Signing on a permanent deal is 19-year-old Portuguese central defender Bruno Correa. He is signed on loan. On loan? He signed a permanent deal, sorry, from Braga in Portugal and immediately gone out on loan to Beziers, where he's hopefully going to get a whole lot of football. One thing I said at the end of last episode and last season was, we need to strengthen our strikers. What I've actually done is I've strengthened everywhere. We've literally bought goalkeepers, fullbacks, centre-backs, central midfielders, wingers and strikers. We have gone big. And I'm hoping what we've done is actually going to do the job. I mean, considering this guy has gone out on loan, that is how good some of the players are that have come in. That I think he can act we can actually afford to send this guy out on loan, basically. Because this is one of our central defenders, signing from PSG on a free transfer. Abdelkader Bajawi, possibly. He is a 24-year-old Tunisian international with 23 caps to his name. And oh my word, his current ability is three and a half star, potential four and a half star. He is a PSG reject and we've managed to snatch him on a free transfer. He's getting paid a lot of money, but I think when we find a player who is that good, we kind of have to go for it. Much like this guy, who's also a PSG reject, Sreko Matjevic, maybe, has signed free transfer from PSG. He played 126 times for their reserves, once for their first team. A free transfer, £12,500 a week there or thereabouts. Three and a half star current ability, five star potential central midfielder. Two Serbian caps to his name. He looks like an absolute beast. We have picked up some wonderful players for very little money. Another player to sign on a free transfer is Abdoulaye Dabo from our feeder club Nantes. He has signed on a permanent deal, £16,000 or £17,000 a week. Another central midfielder, but a versatile central midfielder at that. Can play as a defensive midfielder, can play as a centre-back, can play as an attacking midfielder, and apparently on the right wing, which will never actually play. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. He, once again, is another great signing, I think. Also signing on a free transfer from Nantes' left-back Hugo Lafosse. We've bought him in because, basically, uh, Eduardo Luiz has returned back to his feeder club and Brandon Collignon isn't that good. I've kind of come to this conclusion that he's great when he plays, but defensively, he's not very good. This guy, Hugo Lafosse, has three and a half star current ability, four star potential. I think he's another good little signing that we've got there. Somewhat of a fringe player this one is Vittorio Leone, who is an American slash Italian central midfielder signed previously of New York City. We've had him on trial since about January, um, but he's not been able to actually join until the end of the season. He has now joined. I have loan listed him. He is wanted by Dijon. I'm hoping he's going to go out on loan, but he's got two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential ability. I think he's all right for no money. You can't really go wrong. Now for the goalkeeper that we didn't really need, South African goalkeeper Calvin Matupa has signed, formerly of Supersport United. He is a natural sweeper keeper, current ability is three and a half star ability, four star potential. He is going to give Mr. Daniel Gerritz a run for his money. Gerritz is still the number one keeper, but Calvin Matupu, or Matupa, sorry, I think he's good because he's a sweeper keeper, which is one thing that he actually has above uh, Daniel Gerritz, because Gerritz is actually more of a natural goalkeeper. It wouldn't be a transfer window without some random nationality signing for us, but it Kazakh left back Konstantin Zakharov has signed on a free transfer as well. I've brought him in because we needed a lot of players at left back, basically. Like I said earlier, Colignon, not very good. Eduardo Luis has left the club. He is actually really, really good as a left back. He's going to get some competition for Hugo Lafosse as well. So we've got two really good left backs joining the club. 32 caps for Kazakhstan at 23 years old, formerly of Kairat, which I believe is the best team in Kazakhstan. 131 games, one goal, played in the, uh, the FIFA World Cup qualifying as well by the looks of it. I think we've got a good little player here. 
Joining on loan from Bordeaux is French winger Yannick Tiexera. He's 20 years old. His current ability is four star. So basically, we've now brought him in to replace Joao Pereira. Not Joao. Joao Pereira? Who's Joao Pereira? Uh, Pinto. Whatever his name was, Pinto, who was our right winger, who's now left and gone somewhere else. But I think Yannick is going to be playing a lot of football, and I think he looks like a great little player as well. Now for the player that I am hoping... I am desperately, desperately hoping that this guy will score us the goals that will ideally keep us in the league or ideally actually push us towards the top half of the table. Marco Vegara, a 19-year-old Colombian complete forward, signed from Deportivo Cali. Little hint, if you want to get some good Colombians, go to Deportivo Cali. They often have decent little release fees as well. Half a million pounds, £550,000 it was for Marco Vegara. That was his minimum fee release. Technically, amazing mentally amazing he's got some really good uh, sorry physically amazing really good mental stats as well in there i'm hoping this guy can score us some wonderful wonderful goals uh, if he doesn't i don't know what we're gonna do and the final signing smashing all of our record transfers is luca illich from west brom i believe he starts the game somewhere in france where does he start no he doesn't he starts at Manchester City, apparently. Fair enough, didn't know that. Luka Ilic has signed the Serbian attacking midfielder, but he is very versatile. I've bought him, actually, because he's an inside forward. Him and Marcus Taram and Alan Varal all vying for that one position there. He can also play as a midfielder in the middle. He can play as an attacking midfielder. He can play as a striker. He can do the whole lot. He has cost us £750,000. It's going to potentially rise up to 950 k West Brom only bought him for half a million pounds last year. I feel like we might have been fleeced there. So £1.3 million has been spent on players. We've only actually signed two players for fees, and that is Vergara and Illich costing £1.3 million. A load of free transfers, as we always seem to do. Also, if you look on the right-hand side, we can see a lot of loan players as well going out. Hani Mufta to Ajaysu, Andre Rock to Quevli Ruin, Ibrahim Diarasuba has gone to Konkanu because no bugger wanted to actually sign him. DJ has gone to Borj Peronis because nobody wanted to sign him. David Berkic has gone to Gazalek Ajacio. Ludovic Farage to Clement Foot. Sergio Martella has left and gone to Angers. Lujbisa Kojic has gone to Red Star. I, if that's not... Is that Red Star? Who are they? It's not Red Star. It's Radniki. They're like the third best team in uh, in Serbia. So yeah, Lujbisa Kojic has gone out on loan there. Sofane Khaled has gone on loan to his native Algeria to sign for ES Setif because he wasn't ever going to get many, many football games for us this season, was he? I think that was quite a long roundup of all the transfers that have happened. We are already on the day of the first match of the season, which is going to be up against Auxerre. There is a little bit more news, though, that I think you probably need to be made aware of. Not very long ago, we were offered the France job. Clearly, we haven't taken the France job because basically I don't want to become an international manager in this save. I don't think it's a good move for us. I think if we become an international manager, I think it will start to kind of... I think I'd lose interest a little bit in the save. It's not only France that offered us the job, though. Wales also offered us the job before apparently offering it to Craig Levine. We turned them both down, obviously. We're still not done with the news, however. Financially, there is something that I'm trying to do this season, and that is keep my wage budget under the wage budget. It is keep this number here in the black. It is to basically not spend my transfer budget. I want us to become a financially viable team because there is another piece of news. We might be getting a new stadium. Um, I did randomly ask the board um, a few days ago, on the 5th, we we're on the 8th of the 8th at the moment, a few days ago, I asked the board to build a new stadium, and they went, sure, we need to do that. So, we might be getting a new stadium at some point. Apparently it's going to take two years of planning. No, that's the two years to build the whole thing, so we're currently in the planning stage. I have no idea when we're going to find out what the stadium is, where it's going to be. Apparently it's going to be a 15,000 capacity stadium if we're going to get one which I think we will probably sell out. Right, everything has now been dealt with, I think. There's probably more, but I feel like it's probably not necessary at the moment. We're going to have one match in today's episode because of all the transfers and everything else, and it's going to be Yorkshire, a team that we have beaten before. They have been down into League 2. We, They were the team that actually were fighting us as we got promoted to the uh, to League 1, aren't they? So hopefully we can pick up a good win on the first game of the season. It does look like it's going to be a little bit of a kit clash as we're wearing our blue and white. They're going to be wearing white with blue highlights, but that doesn't really matter too much. I believe their goalkeeper, yes, Andre Lunin, is currently out with a broken finger. That will be good because he is their best goalkeeper. So hopefully they're going to have to play some useless second choice goalkeeper. 
The starting lineup we are going to go for then. The goalkeeper will remain as Daniel Gerrits. Jao Ferreira will be our right back. He was our right back last season. The rest of the back three has changed, however. Vandelay and Bejawi. I've Your name needs to change, doesn't it? I don't know what to change your name to, though. I think we're just going to have to go with Bejawi. Bejawi doesn't sound right, but we're going to go with it. Anyway, left back is going to be Hugo Lafosse. So, three new-ish. Vandelay has been here before, but... Three changes to the usual back four. Pokrovac is currently suspended. I don't know what he did. I'm assuming he just got lots of yellow cards. The midfield then, as that halfback, is going to be Matijevic. Abdullah Dabo and Simon Bogle is going to be the midfield pairing in the middle. Yannick Cexera on the right-hand side. Luke Illich on the left. And Marco Vergara as that striker. I'm not sure whether this is going to work because there's a lot of new players in the team. In fact... There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new players in our starting eleven. If you want to count Vanderlei, that's eight. That that's a lot of new. It's a lot of new players, isn't it? On the bench as well, we are filled with a lot of new players. Matupa, Zhakov, Zakharov, sorry, Asai Antwi, Gvimradzer is there. Boris is there. Ishmael Sa, by the way, has extended his loan deal. Don't really know why now. I don't think I needed to do it. Alan Varal is on the bench as well. He needs a little bit of fitness because he hasn't played for a very very long time. We've got quite a big squad. You'll notice here, Ali is loan-listed and wanted by Neem, so hopefully he's going to go somewhere. Radovanovic is loan-listed and he's unhappy because he's loan-listed. Uh, Marcelo Acuna is loan-listed. He's also wanted by Neem's. Big Gids is wanted by someone. No one's made a bid yet. I'm hoping that might come in because I feel like he's his time is done. We've definitely outgrown him with some of the players here. First game of the season and then against Auxerre, and I am going to struggle massively with a lot of our own players' names, aren't I? I was just about to say, I think this might be a sellout. It's always going to be a sellout, isn't it? It has to be a sellout. I'm hoping we can just get a goal. I think scoring a goal in the opening game, I will be happy with. A point I'll take, a win, obviously, is the dream scenario. Corner for Auxerre to the six-yard box. Vandelay heads clear. Diamande in the middle to Juland, and Mikel Juland has made it 1-0 to Auxerre after just 11 minutes. Not the dream start that we wanted. And with that goal, we drop to the bottom of the table. Wonderful. Half an hour on the clock and a second highlight starting with Auxerre with the ball. Gautier across to Lacazette. Plays it all the way across to Johansson. He's got loads of space. Crosses in. Roche is there and it is just over the bar. Five minutes to play of the first half. It's not looking so good, is it? I'm thinking because we've got a lot of players who are new to the club, we are going to struggle for the first couple of matches. You can see there, Dabo, 6.3. Illich is on a 6.5. We're we're not doing badly. To be honest, they've had one shot on target and it went in. Half-time then, Dabo is going to be coming off and I've just realised I've got no central midfielders on the bench. Right, we're going to do... Mat Matijevic, that's his name, is moved into that attacking midfielder role. Do we swap you two over? Yes, we do. Ishmael Sart for Abdullah Dabo. I think that's all we're going to do. I'm keeping an eye on you, Luka Illich. Alan Varel does want to come on at some point and will be coming on. On the hour mark, not a lot is happening in the second half. We're going to do the change. It is going to be Illich for Alan Varel. We're starting to bring back the usual players into this, uh, into this squad. Looking at the player ratings, actually, everyone's doing all right. We're just not getting any highlights. Going to give them a demand more as well. I don't know whether they can give more. Just maybe have a highlight will be great. Well, we're into the final 10 minutes, and this second half has been extremely boring, and the first half wasn't exactly good either. It looks like we're going to lose 1-0 to Auxerre. The final highlight starts with a throw on for Lafosse. Sa is there. We are into the injury time. Ferreira holds up the play. Matijevic. Matijevic back to Sa. Across to Hugo Lafosse. He doesn't cross it in in time. The slide tackle cuts the ball out, and the full-time whistle goes. That wasn't a particularly good game, was it? I'm disappointed with the result. Wait, despite... Oh, you... Oh, why did I... What did I say? Fix it. You didn't fix it. Well, one game in, and we're already down in 14th place. Up next, I think we might have Guillaume, which is uh, also not going to be the easiest game, but it is a team that we have played in the past, and we have beaten in the past. However, in order to make this episode not be three hours long, we're going to have to end it here. It's not been the ideal start to the season. It's not even been an ideal match, has it? We've made a hell of a lot of transfers. I think we've got some really good players in there. Matijevic, I think, is one. The central defender, who I really can never remember his name. It's Abdul Qadir something. I think he's also a great player. The two 
players that we signed from PSG. I'm putting a lot of faith in Vergara as well, the Colombian striker. He's only 19, can't speak a word of French, so that'll be interesting. But also, we're going to try this season and keep on top of our finances, because it's something that we haven't done for the past eight years. So maybe it's about time that we start doing that. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2019 with USL Dunkirk. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back next time. I don't even know when. I've not even worked this out. It's not going to be close. We're going to try and fly through the season a little bit more. Maybe we'll be around October time. Leon on Lons. Let's go with Leon on Lons.